Dear, why don't you and Scruffles come in now? It's starting to rain. Coming, Mom. Hi hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, I do videos on creepy and disturbing things. Although I hope this is not the first video that you're watching of mine because this is part four in a long series. Yes, today, finally, we are doing tier four of our do not research iceberg. Now, because of the structure of the iceberg, I'm just going to let you guys know how we're going to do the rest of this series. So part four is going to be its own video because it's super long. Part five is also going to be its own video because again, there's just so many topics that these videos are probably gonna be close to 45 minutes to an hour each. And then for tier six and seven, I think I will be able to combine those two into one final part because they're both a little bit shorter. And as always, if you haven't watched part one, at least go back and watch the intro to see all the disclaimers. Now we are going to get right into tier four. However, I'm very grateful that today's video actually does have a sponsor. So I'm going to roll to that and I will see you back here in just a minute. Taking a very quick break in this video to thank today's amazing sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. It's just a really cool way to invest in yourself and your personal growth. So my Skillshare saga continues. I have found several classes on there on how to add ghosts and monsters into photos and footage. This would be really cool for anybody who wanted to make their own ARG or their own found footage series on the internet, like the ones that I sometimes cover on this channel. I have no interest in making an ARG myself. However, I still took one of these classes just because I thought it was really interesting to see the way people can very convincingly edit these kind of things into photos. So the other course that I'm in the middle of right now is called Advanced Lessons for Horror Storytellers. This class definitely got more detailed about the elements of horror storytelling, uh, how to come up with ideas specifically for horror writing, what to do when you get stuck, and a lot more. It's really fun to just take courses like this and learn what it is about these stories, about horror stories that scares us. Skillshare is ad free, so you can stay in the zone while you're exploring. New premium classes are launched every week, so there's always something new. And now the entire catalog is also now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. The first 1,000 people to use my link or my code, Hannah the Horrible, will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Link is at the top of the description below. Thank you again so much to Skillshare for sponsoring a portion of today's video. Okay, let's get started on tier four. The first one in tier four is the second law of thermodynamics. I thought this was gonna be on the list because it was simply gonna be so confusing that nobody should Google it because it would make their brain hurt. Instead, I got a giant dose of existential dread. As always, I am not a very sciencey person, so for any physicists out there that might be watching this, please, excuse my watered down explanation. And of course, in order for me to not only understand this, but also be able to sort of explain it to you guys, I went to somebody who explained it in Reddit slash explain like I'm five. Here are a few entries from there that actually helped me understand this concept. Username McFlaw said, entropy means how ordered something is. Less order means high entropy. Zero entropy means as orders as it could possibly get. Since it's far, far, far more likely that ordered things become unordered due to random events than that unordered things order themselves from the same random events, we can statistically conclude that everything naturally goes towards higher entropy. In other words, the universe gets more messy over time. Only by conscious effort to bring back order can entropy be lowered again. This user and another user in this thread used a messy room as a good metaphor for this. Essentially take a bedroom. A bedroom has many, many infinite ways that it could be considered messy. And it's far more likely to be messy because of all the different ways that it can be messy, aka high 
entropy. On the other hand, there's only one or very, very few cases where the room could be considered perfectly clean and organized and therefore have low entropy. Your room takes way more of your energy to keep it clean, but less of your energy for it to just stay messy. And Therefore, the messy state of the room is far more likely. If that didn't make any sense, which don't feel bad if it didn't, because I read many entries about this and I still don't grasp the concept perfectly. The overall message is that the world and likely the entire universe is more likely to continue to become more and more disordered rather than ordered over time. The rabbit hole of thought processes that that concept will carry you down is very creepy and upsetting and I would rather avoid it. Six digit manga codes. I don't even know if I can say hentai on YouTube. I might have to bleep it out because anyway, do y'all know what hentai is? I'm assuming that most people out there watching this do know, but just in case so those that don't know, hentai is adult films and other adult materials, except instead of real people, it's anime or manga. However, whatever form it comes in, but it is uh, adult focused. So there is a specific site on the internet that is devoted to this particular kind of material. And people soon figured out that you could use six digit codes as reference codes in this website. For example, if you put in this website address slash one, two, three, four, five, six, a certain manga or anime that somebody was previously referencing will pop up. It became a meme within a lot of anime circles back in the day, and it was kind of became this secret code that people out of the loop wouldn't understand. They'd also like incorporate different numbers into random memes that they would share across the internet. So those who understood what the numbers were for could go to whatever was being referenced in the meme. And then people that didn't understand this would be none the wiser. If you decide to put one of these codes into your browser with this website name, which you can easily Google if you happen to have a high desire to see this kind of stuff. It's quite a gamble of what you're going to get if you put in whatever, a random set of numbers. Next one is Africare Shoeboxes ad. This one creeped me out. This is like the definition of found footage or lost media except it was very, very real. So this was a very creepy PSA from 1995. It showed black and white footage of Rwandan refugees during the Rwandan genocide that was happening in 1994. I'll see if I can play the video without getting in trouble with YouTube. I'll test it before I post this video. So if YouTube doesn't like it, then I will leave a link to it down below so you can go watch it if you have a strong desire to. Warning, it's obviously disturbing. I just, the fact that whoever made this and decided that this would be a good idea to make into a PSA to go all over is just beyond me, but this was totally a real thing. Bobbit worms, AKA the Eunice Aphroditois. This is another animal that looks like it's out of a sci-fi horror movie. This one can be as small as four inches long or as long as 10 feet. And as for its prey, it's pretty much the stuff of nightmares. It lives in the ocean and buries itself completely under the sediment with its little antennae sticking out in order to detect prey above the surface. And then it ambushes anything that goes by. It strikes it with these sharp things that it has in its mouth. Some people call it the sand striker, but it's often referred to as the Bobbit worm based again on the John and Lorena Bobbit case, which we talked about in a previous tier and I've talked about in a whole separate video. But the reason is because its prey is sometimes ambushed so quickly that it's sliced clean into. Breach birth is next. And I assume they spelled it wrong on this chart. I believe they meant the double E's, but regardless, breach birth is when a baby is born feet first. I'm not sure exactly why this is on the list other than the fact that it's like hard to think about if you were the one that had a breached baby. Um, the only thing I can think of is that there is a procedure that they do if they know that the baby is breached, you know, long before the mom is going to give birth. There is a procedure where they can 
can turn the baby in the womb. They do this sometimes before birth, like there's a procedure they can move the baby around, like massage the baby into place. And then sometimes they do it during the actual labor portion of it, just to prevent a C-section at all costs. It sounds very, very uncomfortable. Buried penis syndrome. This is basically exactly what it sounds like. It happens usually at birth or at a very young age, but it can also happen later in life. This is when skin or fat obscures a normally sized penis. This makes it seem like it's very, very small or even invisible. And this is not to be confused with a micro penis because that is not the same thing. It definitely looks like something you would not be expecting if you were expecting a normal D. However, I don't, I mean, I guess, yeah, you know, you shouldn't Google it because the pictures may take you by surprise, but this almost seems like body shaming to me. I don't like that this one is on the list. I just think, yeah, you're normal. You're okay. Well, no matter what your genitalia looks like, it, you're not a freak for it. All right, candiru. This is a species of fish often referred to as a toothpick fish or the vampire fish. It's a parasitic catfish and the smaller ones are allegedly able to infect the human urethra. Very few cases of this have actually been verified though. So few cases that we're not even sure if it's verifiable as a real thing or possibly just a myth. Regardless, if it is true, that's very, very upsetting. Chinese hourglass spider. We've done a lot of animals on this list so far, and I'm not sure anything can quite beat the Chinese hourglass spider. I don't like this one at all, and I'm glad that I don't live in an area where they are. Do not worry. Like always, I will never spring a photo on you without warning. I will always give you the option to skip it, so a photo of this spider will come in a few minutes. It's very hard to describe without showing you, but these spiders have a flat disc for a bottom. And they have a very unique pattern on the disc. Because of this pattern on this very round disc, they are sometimes called the Oreo spider. And some people actually keep these as pets, but they are insanely expensive, sometimes close to $4,000. So these spiders make these burrows, and then once they detect movement from bugs above their little dirt pile burrows, these spiders just pop out. They pop out of nowhere and then just like quickly suck these bugs into their lair. And then sometimes if these spiders feel scared or threatened, they will enter their little burrow head first and use their flat bottoms to plug the hole. It is so creepy because if you just saw this, you would think you found some really cool antique or artifact or something like this, you would have no idea. If you saw this thing sticking out of hole, you'd have no idea that it was a spider underneath. I'm very passionate about this one. This spider creeps, all spiders creep me up, but this one really gets me. Thank God they are not super threatening to humans. They are hardly poisonous to us, but still. Okay, skip to the next one if you don't wanna see a picture, but I'm gonna show a picture of these spiders right now. Okay, if you wanna see the spider, so here's a picture of it plugging the hole in its burrow with its butt. That's its butt. Yeah, uh-huh. And this is a picture of the actual spider. Who, who created that thing? Crucified Chicken. Crucified Chicken is an art piece by Australian artist Deborah Sengel. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a chicken that is depicted as crucified on a cross. Uh, it's got a loincloth and all, and on the top of the cross, it says KFC. Deborah says that she made this art piece as commentary on the meat industry and the animal suffering to make our food, which that's what I would have thought of first, especially because it says KFC on the top of it. That's definitely what I thought she meant by this art piece. However, I am not religious. A lot of Austrians were very, very angry when she brought this art piece out and when it debuted because they thought 
thought it was extremely disrespectful to Christianity, which, you know, like that it was kind of mocking Jesus Christ dying on the cross, which honestly, even not as a religious person, I do kind of understand that. I mean, that is kind of sacrilegious, but I also understand what she was trying to get at. Dene is next. Dene was the princess of Argos and the only daughter of King Acrisius. The king went to an oracle to ask why he wasn't given a son, and she told him of a prophecy that not only was he never destined to have a son, but his own grandson would kill him if he was ever born. To prevent this fate, the king locked his daughter up, Danae, in a dungeon guarded by savage dogs. God, Zeus, of course, decided that he just had to have Danae. So he disguised himself as a ray of sunshine in order to get past the savage dogs. And then he shapeshifted into this shower of gold in order to lure Danae and impregnate her in this form. AKA like a lot of mythology, he R-worded her. A son was born to her named Perseus. Scared still that his grandson was gonna come kill him like the Oracle said, the king locked both Danae and her son Perseus in a chest and then sent them out to sea. There's a lot more to this story. It kind of goes on and on and it is all, you know, pretty disturbing, but I feel like it's just basic Greek mythology. I don't know, this one's kind of boring to me, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. I think it's on the list because Zeus is creepy, but I'm not sure. Delphine Lalori. Delphine was actually one of the most frightening serial killers of all time. If you've ever seen American Horror Story Coven, you already know of her. Kathy Bates played her. She is known for torturing and killing an unknown number of enslaved people in her New Orleans mansion in the 1830s. And I mean, beyond horrible things were reportedly done to her slaves. Nothing has really been proven due to the poor documentation we have from that time. It was all the way back in the 1830s. But here is some things that eyewitnesses reported that she had done to her victims. It was said that she would sometimes gouge their eyes out, fill their mouths with a uh, feces and then sew them shut. One report said that one of the women victims had all of her bones in her body broken and then they were all reset so she resembled a crab. And these examples I just gave you are not even the worst of it. This woman was an absolute monster from hell. A fire broke out in her mansion in 1834. And this is actually what ended up revealing the evil that was taking place in her home at the time. She likely, after this all came out about her, it's likely that she fled to Paris, but nobody knows for sure. And to this day, nobody actually really knows what happened to her. And like I said earlier, I would not look this one up because the details are just awful. Like the few things that I told you about are kind of like the tip of the iceberg. And those things, in my opinion, are just absolutely terrifying to even think about. So I would just, yeah, I had no idea that evil like this even existed, which I admit is naive of me. But oh my God, even I was like shocked. And I read a lot of true crime. Dolphin. <laughs> Dolphin and the Headless Fish. This is a video clip that somebody captured of a dolphin. As we've discussed a few times in this video series, dolphins are not as cute and innocent as they would like us to believe. The dolphin in this video managed to remove the head of a fish and then used the fish's body as yeah. Dolphins are sexual deviants. I'm not going to show this video in my video. However, it's very, very easy to find if you have the desire. Echidna dicks. Echidnas are mammals often referred to as spiny anteaters and they look like this. They are adorable. They also have a four-headed penis. I did not know that it could get any weirder than the ducks we talked about previously, but alas, it did. Google image this one if you have any desire to see it, but holy moly, it is exactly what I just described. Four heads, four heads. You know that dog in Harry Potter, the first one? Second one? First, first, first movie? Yeah, it's like that, except with four. <laughs> Egyptian creation myth, AKA Atom. This is another mythology one. This is Egyptian mythology. Atom is often referred to as the 
first god to ever come into existence. Stories vary, but it is said that he possibly came into existence by saying his own name over and over. Some say that he was born out of a lotus flower, some say an egg, who knows. He had two children by himself. God Shu and Goddess Tefnu were his children. There's several stories that go along with this on how he went about creating a male and female children of his without anybody else. Some say that he created them by spitting them out of his mouth. And others say that he did it through except his hand was the representative of a woman. Others say that he made love to his own shadow. Fournier Gangrene. So we already talked about gangrene in a previous tier. This one is also gangrene, except on the penis or scrotum. The photos of this are absolutely terrifying to look at. Worse than botfly debridement, in my opinion. So I do not recommend going to look at this because it is just horrifying and I feel absolutely terrible for anybody who has had to live through this. Oh my gosh. H.P. Lovecraft's cat. Many of you are probably aware of who H.P. Lovecraft is. He's a pretty well-known, pretty famous American author. His cat's name, I cannot say this and don't want to say it anyway, but his cat's name is N-Word Man. Obviously, it's not N-word, it's the very derogatory term. His family acquired this cat and named him probably around 1899. It's on here because you often trick people into saying this word by asking them to look up H.P. Lovecraft's cat on Google. And then it's funny, they say a racial word out loud, which yeah. Kisashi Auchi. This is another one from Japan, so please excuse my poor pronunciation. I will try my best. In 1999, Japan's Tokemura nuclear power plant had an accident that caused a radiation exposure to over 650 people, and two of the workers at the time lost their lives. This one is particularly disturbing because the accident was 1000% preventable. The workers were improperly trained and so they were mixing materials by hand and then they proceeded to pour seven times the proper amount of pure uranium into the wrong tank without the proper protective gear. Hisashi Auchi was one of these workers. He was standing right over the uranium when it was poured into this tank. He was only 35 years old at the time and he was exposed to more radiation than anybody in history has ever been exposed to. He arrived at the hospital with almost zero white blood cells, which means he essentially didn't have an immune system. His skin was literally melting off his body and he was actually crying blood. And then the doctors and his family kept him alive in the hospital for 80 years days, in spite of several reports saying that he was pleading everyone to let him die. He was suffering heart attack after heart attack, of course, in the hospital, but the family asked the doctors to keep reviving him, and so they did. They tried stem cell transplant and skin grafts, but the radiation in his system was simply too high, and at one point he said that, I am not a guinea pig, please stop doing this to me. It's like he felt like they were wanted to view these tests to see if they could treat this high of radiation and kept him alive, even though it was unethical to do so. He suffered through probably one of the worst things that anybody has ever suffered through and probably had one of the most painful deaths that anybody has ever had. I cannot imagine. Horsehair worms. These are worms. They only grow usually only a few inches long, but they can get longer. Thankfully, for once on this list, they are harmless to both humans and other animals. Their larvae are only parasitic to things like beetles and cockroaches. These things are named for the fact that they do actually look like hair, and they are known for tying themselves up into knots, like big knots together, and it's really gross, except it's also kind of cool. Here's a picture of it or a clip of it. Ichthyosis. This is another medical condition. This one's a skin disorder. This is when people develop really, really thick 
really, really dry, super scaly skin. This is of course not that disturbing in itself. It's just something that people have to live with sometimes. For a lot of people, I mean, it's a nuisance, but it doesn't like super affect them. They can manage it with certain therapies and moisturizers and stuff like that. But there's also this thing called Harlequin type ichthyosis, which means your skin is like this, except it's super severe. It usually happens at birth and is like 100% of your body. And this condition, if you were born with it, was almost always fatal. Babies with it would suffer breathing problems, bad infections, and just overall dehydration. Survival rates now in more modern times are increasing due to our better neonatal care. I don't think this is gross or anything. I just think it's really scary. Photos of poor babies with this condition I mean, you won't believe your eyes, but it's mostly just very, very heartbreaking. It looks so painful. And honestly, when I saw a picture of a baby with this, I thought it was a doll. Like that's how bad it is. I cannot imagine. I just, this makes me so sad, the suffering that those babies must go through, especially because a lot of them don't make it. Jiggers, AKA the jigger flea is another parasite. If you have trypophobia, again, I would highly recommend you don't look this one up. They typically live in South or Central America and they are the tiniest known flea, usually measuring at a mere one millimeter. They will infest your feet and cause a trypophobic nightmare. Okay, let's talk about the latrine sloth, AKA the toilet sloth. In the Amazon rainforest in the Northeast part of Peru, there is a research station built for researchers to come and go as needed to conduct, well, their research. The facility, of course, has a pit toilet for people coming and going. It's a big hole in the ground with a seat over it. One night in November 2001, a researcher went to the bathroom only to be greeted by a sloth. The sloth was just casually as can be scooping the contents from the toilet out of the ground and eating it, not like tasting it, feasting on it, like just scooping it up, just like this is what his life was meant to be. At first, the researchers figured that one of the sloths in the area was probably sick or something, had some sort of disease that was making him seek this out. But as they continued to observe, they found that this was an actual phenomenon and sloths over and over, different ones would be sneaking into their pit toilet to eat the contents. Sometimes they would just appear from within the pits, just down there eating everything. Now, I don't know why it took them so long after discovering this, but they did finally fence off the latrine in 2007 so that the sloths could not get into it. Obviously it wasn't safe for the sloths or other animals in the area as the sloths can assuming human feces could spread infection to themselves and to other wildlife. But good God, there was one theory that the sloths were doing this because maybe they could like sense that the human feces had nutrients that the sloths regular food couldn't provide. And so they were craving that, but that was just one theory. They don't actually know for sure why or why this tasted so good to the sloths. I don't know. Skip to the next one if you don't want to see a picture, but I'm about to show a picture of one of the sloths just peeking out of the toilet. So, okay, here it is. Leda and the Swan. This is another story from Greek mythology and another one of Zeus R wording, yet another woman in the form of something completely unhuman. In this one, Zeus shapeshifts into a swan and then he R words, a princess named Leda as a swan. There's a lot of artwork depicting this. There's a poem and some of the artwork, obviously I'm not showing any of the graphic ones, but it does get kind of disturbing because it gets graphic. Moving on. Magical Sleepover You. This is, this is another film for people that are over 18. It's a cartoon of Princess Peach and Daisy, both characters from the Super Mario Brothers video games. And they have a lot of S-E-G-G-S in this video, the two of them. It's a cartoon, lots and lots, lots and lots. For people into that kind of thing. Obviously I can't show any of it here. Okay, 
let's move on. Mango worms. This is a species of blowfly, and again, it is just the stuff of nightmares. They are parasitic to large animals, including humans. It's more of that concept of just maggots burrowing into things and then growing. The first thing on YouTube that comes up when you look up mango worms is a vet doing a procedure to remove them from a poor doggy. It's just horrendous. Do not watch this video unless you like really like being grossed out because I, oh man, I felt so bad for the dog. But the way that they're squeezing these maggots out, it looks like Play-Doh hair. Parasitic twins. This one has the word parasite in it, but thankfully we have moved on from maggots. This is when an embryo starts to form twins in the uterus, but the twins don't fully separate. And one of the twins is very dominant throughout the development. These are not to be confused with conjoined twins as two children still result from conjoined twins. Both children are alive and conscious. This one's called parasitic because one of the embryos stops developing and it stays attached to the dominant twin. Here are some drawings of what this can sometimes look like. And this was my biggest question. No, the parasitic twin is never alive or conscious. I don't think they've ever seen a brain form in the parasitic twin. And so it's never alive, conscious, and they often surgically remove it from the fully developed child. Rat King. This is a very weird phenomenon. It's very rare. And no one knows for sure how this happens. But it's when rats, but sometimes other rodents, this can happen to, like squirrels, get their tails all stuck together. Then there's this big group of typically rats all conjoined at the tails. And as they try to get away, of course, this tightens the knot and they are all stuck like that. And it's very, very sad. There is a theory that this happens when a rat in the colder months gets something sticky stuck on their tail and then the cold weather like solidifies it. And then while they're sleeping with their rat companions, their tails get stuck. And then they realize that their tails are stuck. And so their natural instinct is to try to pull away at the rat struggle, which of course, like I said, tightens the knot up. However, we still don't know exactly that's just one theory. This one makes me very, very sad because I, some of you know this about me, I love rats. I mean, domesticated rats. I would never own a wild rat, but I absolutely would love to have rats as pets. So this one makes me particularly sad. The other thing about this one is that it is a rumor that if you find a rat king, it is a really bad omen and it's a sign that a plague is forthcoming. Scallop eyes. So scallops, the seafood that a lot of us eat, actually have around 200 tiny little eyes lining their shells. It's pretty dang cool. That's it, scaphism. This is an alleged ancient Persian form of execution. The main story surrounding this one is that it is said that this was given as a punishment to the soldier Mathrodites for killing the king's brother. So the method goes, you tie a victim up in a boat. They would then force feed the victim honey and milk. They would also spread the honey all over the victim's face. The person is force fed this mixture until they uh, go to the bathroom all over themselves and or vomit in the boat. I think they're left by the water so that there's more like bugs there, then they're left out exposed. Wasps, flies, other insects are all attracted by the sweet honey mixture as well as the excrement. And they go to the victim, start stinging the victim, biting the victim, going inside of the victim, laying eggs, and eating the victim from the outside in and the inside out. But it's not over. They come back and force feed the person again the next day and the next day and the next day after that so that the person doesn't simply die quickly from dehydration or exposure. Instead, they keep them alive to prolong the process of the insects slowly eating them. It is claimed that Mathroditus was killed like this and that it took him a whole 17 days before he was put out of his misery. However, like I said, this is alleged. I don't think we have any verified proof that this actually happened to anybody. However, given the other stuff we've already talked about, that wouldn't surprise me if this was a real thing at all. Sonic's feet. I feel like this one is just like another one that's gonna go like whoop, 
right over my head. So people feel free to correct me in the comments if I get this wrong. But you know Sonic the Hedgehog, the character? He's pretty known to never be barefoot. He always has shoes on no matter what, even if the context would normally not require shoes. There's this ongoing rumor around the internet that maybe his feet are so horrific, nobody was ever meant to see them and that's why he keeps shoes on at all times. And his main gig is running fast and running all day. So his feet must absolutely look and smell terrible. Bringing this up to people and making them think about it really pisses some people off for some reason, at least what I found on like Reddit and stuff. I don't exactly know why. Like I said, it's possible this one's going completely over my head, but I I believe it's just the concept of like the Pandora's box of what Sonic the Hedgehog's feet possibly look like. Spyro Subway. Spyro is a purple dragon from the Spyro video game series. If you Google Spyro Subway or Spyro at Subway, you'll get a meme of this dragon working at Subway with other similar characters, except the sandwich he's working on has one of the other creatures defecating into the bread. I'm assuming this is some sort of meme or again it's just a shock meme and it's just another way to trick people into seeing it by saying like I bet you can't find a picture of Spyro at Subway and so they have to prove the person wrong and so they google it. I recommend watching uh, another creator named Dayo Man's short video explaining the meme as he explains everything pretty well without actually showing you or showing you the disgusting part of the photo so he did a pretty good video on it. Now for the story of Terrare. Terrare was born in France around 1772. This is a true story of a man who was an absolute medical Marvel. Warning, this story does contain details about this man being really mean to animals and to a baby. Terari was born with something off about him. His parents noticed that he had an absolutely insatiable appetite. So much so that they ended up kicking him out of their home because they could not feed him. By the time he was only 17 years old, he could eat his entire weight in food every single day. At first he went on the streets and he had to beg and steal from others in order to get enough food to feed himself. But then he quickly became a street performer because the large amounts of things that he could eat would impress people. He would eat anything that people passing by would be willing to give him. Entire bags of apples, non-food objects like a bag of coins, and just way more. When the War of the First Coalition started in 1792, he joined the military. The rations from this also could not keep him full, and he was eventually put in the hospital for exhaustion. The doctors there, of course, started studying him after they found that there was no amount of food that could fill him up. First, they gave him 15 meals. He ate every scrap of food, on the table of these 15 meals and immediately fell asleep. So then they gave him a cat alive. He ate everything but the bones. They then gave him a puppy. They gave him a snake, a live eel, bunches of other different live animals. Nothing fazed him. He ate them all. I have no idea why he didn't at least kill them first. Not sure why he had to eat them live, but okay. He tried at one point sneaking documents in his stomach for the military. That's a whole other longer story, but it didn't work out. He returned, he quit the military, and he would resort to drinking blood from other patients that were bloodletting. He would even go to the morgue and started eating the cadavers. And then at the peak of this, he stole a 14 month old baby from someone at the hospital and ate him. He went missing for four years after that, of course, because everybody was after him, but he was later found. He ended up at the hospital where he would later pass away. It's possible, and there's a theory out there that perhaps he suffered from a very, very severe case of hyperthyroidism. However, I feel like we would have seen another case like this since then, and it's been hundreds of years since this happened. So I don't know, just absolutely bizarre though. Even though documentation for back then is bad, as far as we know, this really happened. I got cold, okay? Teenage Mutant Ninja Skull slash pizza time. All right, we're getting further down in this iceberg for a reason, and one of the reasons is this. This might be worse. The Dipper goes to Taco Bell, for me at least. This is a video 
that somebody made. People dressed as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The theme song is playing in the background while they're all hanging out, eating pizza, you know. Uh, it takes a turn when the three of them just start attacking Leonardo until he is no longer alive. Of course, it's all staged, so he nothing really happened, but that's what we're supposed to be seeing. One of them then repeatedly s him in the pizza. And then they all start taking turns R-wording his body. They then um, remove his, uh, this part of his body. And then they start R-wording that, except not his mouth, but like the part that they cut off, the neck part. They all have these really ginormous, very, very fake looking Ds. And then they all start just spewing this also clearly fake all over the body. I cannot believe I'm describing this on the internet. It's all very, very clearly fake. Like, duh, there's no, the, absolutely none of this really happened. It is so over the top fake, but it doesn't take away from the fact that this is so disgusting. And then there's a second video that this person made called Pizza Time. This is when the four of them are just over a pizza again with their very giant very fake d's and then again they start all over the pizza with fake c this video goes on for three minutes which you're thinking well that doesn't seem that long that's a pretty short video but when that is all they're doing the entire video trust me it feels like an eternity it really goes for rule 34 of the internet the creators of this video got sued for copyright uh but probably wasn't really for copyright but was more for obvious other reasons, and they were forced to delete their YouTube channel. By far one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen. But then this next one is one of the most disturbing things that you'll ever hear. It's a story, the Jolly Rancher story. Sounds really innocent, but it's not. I already knew what this one was. I had actually heard of this a few years back and had unfortunately read it. So I knew what I was getting into and that almost made it worse because I knew what I was about to relive. It's a very, very disgusting copy pasta. And like the last one, I cannot believe that I'm about to explain the Jolly Rancher story for my YouTube channel, but here we are. It's a story, supposedly true, about Steve's girlfriend, Samantha, who comes and visits him at college. They are happy to see each other. Steve starts performing or on Samantha. She smells very bad, tastes very bad for some reason, but Steve doesn't want to be rude. So he puts a Jolly Rancher in his mouth while he's doing this to try and mask this unpleasant odor coming from Samantha. This is the part that, oh my god, it's not too late to skip ahead if you don't want to hear this. You, you'll never be the same. The Jolly Rancher gets stuck in Samantha. Steve goes to pull it out and instead of the candy, he pulls out, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm not crying, I'm just so disgusted. He pulls out a nodule of gonorrhea. He accidentally puts it in his mouth thinking it's the candy and then he bites down. <sighs> yeah, obviously it turns out Samantha had cheated on him and contracted an STI. She was ignoring the symptoms. There, it's done. I'll just have to relive it a couple more times in editing, but at least it's already out. I, yep. This is my life now. Burn spit dogs. This was a breed of dog that is now extinct. They were bred specifically to run on a wheel called a turn spit. This turn spit would turn the meat over the fire as it was cooking in order for the meat to cook evenly and thoroughly. This was of course like in the 1800s of course and they bred this dog so that the people wouldn't have to sit there for hours and hours turning the meat over the fire. One of these dogs is actually preserved like a taxidermy dog of this breed is preserved in a museum in Wales. This is what the breed of dog looks like. It's disturbing how humans breed dogs to fit their specific needs. And as you can imagine, this particular breed of dog 
there's pretty good evidence that they weren't treated very well. Like the turn spits that they were on were like suspended up by the ceiling. Here's a picture of what it might've looked like. And I think they did this so the dogs couldn't jump out and take a break when they wanted to. This specific breed of dog actually inspired the birth of the ASPCA. It actually sparked a huge change in starting to treat animals slightly better. Unagi. Unagi is a food, it's an eel, and we generally think of it as a Japanese food. It's often served in sushi restaurants. It's a pretty unsustainable food. Some pretty unethical practices go into farming it, but otherwise I can't really figure out why it's on this list. I mean, it's poisonous if you don't cook it correctly or thoroughly enough. Like, it is creepy that even a small amount of this blood from an eel can kill a person if it's not cooked properly. So I guess that makes it kind of disturbing. But I also found this Japanese commercial for an eel farming company. And this, I don't think this is part of the iceberg. I don't think this is the reason this is on the iceberg, but I just happened upon it while researching this. And I thought it was really interesting. It's really disturbing, creepy commercial. It's very sexist as it is implied that this woman is being held captive. And then she turns into an eel at the end of the commercial and then the eel is cooked. So there there's that. Here, I'll show you the commercial. I think I can show it. Kanosoto いつも伸び伸びと過ごせるようにし。美味しいものをお腹いっぱい食べさせ。さよなら。そして彼女は去っていった。その where the dead go to die. This is a uh, movie and I put that in quotes for a reason. It's an animated film about a group of children who gets taken on this journey by this talking black red-eyed dog named Labby. Honestly, I am scared that this film is on tier four and not tier seven because if this is only halfway down the iceberg, I am scared of what is to come. Okay, so on the screen right now, I'm just going to put a list of all of the things that I am not going to say out loud in fear of getting in trouble with YouTube that are in this film. But even besides that, the film itself is not good. The animation is really bad. The voice acting is really bad. It looks like early 2000s video game status, if that. And the themes in the movie are honestly, it's just an abomination. It's a crime against nature. And then the whole film is like this. Yes, I watched most of the film. Let's just say that there's a scene between the boy and the demon dog. If you chose to watch this movie, you'll never unsee it. This is a Chinese one, so please, please excuse my Chinese pronunciation. It's a man named Shu Xiodong. Shu is an MMA fighter, AKA mixed martial arts. He is known for challenging and then fighting fraudulent martial artists. He became particularly well known after fighting Wei Li in 2017 and their fight was filmed. Wei Li was a self-proclaimed Tai Chi master and Shu easily and quickly exposed him as a total fraud. China, Shu's country, doesn't like him. He promotes the Western style MMA fighting and he believes that it's better than the traditional Chinese martial arts. However, China being a very, you know, traditional country, I guess you could say, they see Xu as him disrespecting the whole country of China, turning his back on his own culture and his own country. He insulted another Tai Chi grandmaster. Again, I'm gonna butcher this name, but his name was Chen, uh, Shouo Wang. He called him a fraud and a dog publicly. Shen sued Shu 
and he won. Shu had to pay him 400,000 yuan, which is about $58,000. And he was supposed to publicly apologize to him for calling him a fraud and a dog on social media for seven consecutive days. Shu paid the fine. He paid this. He paid the $58,000 for being sued but he refused to apologize. China lowered Xu's social media credit score, which is totally a thing in China. They changed it to a D. So he had very bad social standing in China and he still does, I think, to this day. This means he cannot buy plane tickets, train tickets, real estate. He's banned from nice hotels, nice clubs, and nice restaurants. His children are not allowed to go to any private schools there. Anything he posts on social media is also banned. There's this rumor that he sends them to people he knows in America so that the Americans can post his videos on social media there, but still you can't access them from China. It's pretty obvious why he's on this list, but I mean, essentially it's because this is some real Black Mirror shit. Like this is scary that a country is censoring somebody this bad for saying something about someone else. Like it does seem very intense. However, I do admit I know nothing about Chinese culture. I am super American. I've never been to China. And so I'm trying not to judge their culture based on my American culture, if that makes sense. But still, it is a little frightening about the consequences of what he got for simply saying this about somebody else. Okay, this next one, I'm not even gonna try to say the first name because I will not, I, I give up. The first name, I'll just call him Z. The last name is Biksinski. It's a Polish horror artist. He made this really sick Gothic artwork. And apparently this artist, Z, I guess I'll just call him, he was so reserved and so shy that he wouldn't even attend his own like opening exhibits. He also didn't like anybody trying to explain what his work meant. He didn't think that his art meant any one thing. He purposely didn't title any of his art because he didn't want it to be confined into one definition. He did not like anybody trying to define it. He wanted it very, very open to interpretation. Anyway, this man ended up very unlucky, which is probably why he's on this list. In 1998, he very tragically lost his wife to cancer. A year later, their son died from S word. And then only a few years later on February 21st, 2005, he himself was found dead in his flat with 17 wounds. This was three days before his 76th birthday. The 19 year old son of his longtime caretaker cleaning woman was arrested along with an accomplice for the crime shortly after it happened. This teenager was sentenced to 25 years for killing him. He killed artist Z over a mere equivalent of a hundred dollars that he asked him to loan him. So he just had like just a terrible series of unfortunate events all within a few years that ended this man's life. A lot of people, of course, attribute all these bad things happening to him to his art, saying that his art is cursed. I personally think that he was just a very brilliant artist who very coincidentally had a very tragic end. Nikocado Avocado tapes. Okay, so most of you probably know who Nikocado Avocado is. He is a YouTuber. He's a mukbanger. He's pretty well known for being previously very, very skinny, very uh, traditionally healthy. He was vegan. And then he put on a significant amount of weight after he quit veganism to become a mukbanger YouTuber. Now, I'm not gonna show anything from his channel, maybe a picture of him and that's it, because I cannot stand mukbang channels. It's not Nikocado specifically. I don't like any mukbang channels. I can't stand it. The sound of people eating, the look of people eating, I just, mm, it, mm, it grosses me out so much. But his mukbangs in particular, he is known for eating just these enormous amounts of very, very not nutrients dense food, such as lots of fast food, lots of, you know, like Cheeto challenges, stuff like that. Again, like I said, I don't watch it. So the topic of this one is exactly what it sounds like. I had no idea, but apparently Nikocado Avocado did have a tape that 
went out there. I'm pretty sure he has an OnlyFans too, was another rumor I heard. I don't think he, I don't think it got leaked. I'm pretty sure that he openly put this out, I believe. And look, I feel like I have really committed to this iceberg for you guys. I read Maggot Girl. I read Dipper Goes to Taco Bell. I watched most of Where the Dead Go to Die. I watched the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video. So you're all gonna have to forgive me and give me a pass on this one, but I did not watch Nikocado Avocado's video. And let me be very clear, it has nothing to do with Nikocado himself. It is none of my damn business what he does with his body, what he chooses to put on the internet, and what he doesn't. I don't like him for other problematic reasons that have nothing to do with his body or this tape that he made. I am not gonna watch this simply because it feels really weird to watch a fellow YouTuber's tape. I thought of it in terms of if another YouTuber put this out, would I want to see it? And the answer is no. It just feels weirdly invasive to see a fellow YouTuber in a different context in that context, especially if I'm not positive that they consented to it. But I have no desire to see any YouTubers that I watch or YouTubers I don't watch, any YouTubers I like or don't like, I have no desire to see it. I've really committed to this iceberg, but that was just, nope. All right, friends, that is the end of tier four until we move on to tier five. Make sure to go check out the Patreon below if you're interested in extra perks. They get early access amongst many other benefits. So go check it out if you're interested. And other than that, thank you so much to all my patrons on the screen right now. Special shout out to top tiers, Colin Holm, Deck of Cards, Michelle Valdovinos, Tom L, JJ, Dirty Kitty, Quasi Eli, Little Kittle Cat, Mitchell Meyer, Whimsicott Fan, Delta Wolf 776, Mike, Alice Paul, and Dark Sided Otter. Also, don't forget to check out Skillshare in the link below. Okay guys, I will see you in the next one.